And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new repo uh, from scratch. So I'm going to go to this MLOps template here. I'm going to say use this template. And I'm going to create a new repository. And we can call this um, we can call this uh, MLOps uh, presentation. And we'll, we'll, we'll put uh, a current date here, 11 to 022. And so this is going to pull from my GitHub, get my MLOps template. And we can say here, this is a repo for demonstrating MLOps best practices. Here we go. And if I select this, and I could say include all the branches if I wanted to. And in this case, I don't care about that. I'm just going to pick the default branch, which is the GPU branch. And once I've got this, it's going to use all the existing code. So again, it does it does save the dev container stuff here that I built before. Um, I could change it if I wanted to. And then I also have the ability to, if I, if I needed to, to um, create a new code space. In this case, uh, potentially what I could do is I could sp spin up uh, either a GPU or a or a CPU one. Let's go ahead and pick a, a GPU one here. And let's go ahead and, and create this code space. So the, the first time you set up a dev container, if it doesn't have uh, pre-builds, it will take a little bit of time. Like it could take you know, maybe like several minutes to to spin it up. And that's why the pre-builds are, are so helpful is that they launch uh, immediately. And if we take a look at this, you can see each of the steps of the build process uh, can be watched uh, as, a, as I'm building out my environment. And I could even toggle back and forth. And we could look, for example, if I go back to this, we could even look inside of the Docker file and we could see what's happening. So it's what it's going to do, it's going to run these commands here, like install FFmpeg, install Python 3.8, virtual environment, install GCC, right? These are all things that are, they're, they're basically being done uh, inside of here. And now it's actually installing the pinned packages as well. So if, if we go through here and we, we go into the requirements file here we go we see pin packages pin packages so that's what that's what actually is is um is is happening inside of here is it's picking each of these pinned uh, packages and, and 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 installing them one by one so that's why it could take a while and this is why doing the pre-built um code spaces or the, the code, sp code space pre-builds are, are pretty nice because you don't have to worry about waiting for all this stuff uh, to happen. Uh, and you can see here that I installed a lot of stuff inside of here and I'm installing even particular versions and I'm pinning them because I, I know that at one point that these worked. Now I could do an experimental build where I then have unversioned ones to, to kind of test and see if certain packages work or don't work. Uh, and that's a great way to to play around as well with using the best of both worlds. So like, for example, I could create like another branch that's called GPU Bleeding Edge or something or GPU Research. And that GPU branch could be trying all of the latest uh, images. In fact, we could even or, or packages. In fact, we could even do that, which would probably be a good thing to actually demonstrate how you could do this. And so what's what's great about this is that i would have my stable production environment and because we know mlops is moving so quickly but then i could also have an experimental environment and people could look at which build they would want to actually try out and if it's a if it's you know let's say the new cutting edge libraries are are working okay then we could actually take those new versions of the packages and put them into the project <clears throat> And now we're doing the, uh, I think we're doing the the Debian install here, right? Which is ffmpeg, um, and this I believe is all of the all of the the packages in Python. 
and now it's configuring the dev container. So it, so it takes a few minutes. It takes a few minutes to get all this stuff uh, installed, <clears throat> and which is, again, why it's a good idea to do the pre-built containers, and now it's installing CUDA uh, inside, which gives us access to the, to the GPU. So it looks like it's pretty close to being done here. So you, you do have to have some patience when you're dealing with the, the cutting edge MLOps libraries like GPU libraries because a lot of the stuff has just been developed and you're pulling down these packages and you're installing them. And again, this is why I think things like code spaces are, are, are so helpful in that once you've got it figured out, you, you don't necessarily have to figure out again in the future and 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 this saves you a lot of time basically so it looks like it's under it's doing the the final CUDA stuff it's now installing the um, some stuff from Nvidia and unpacking it so you can learn a lot as well about the the cutting edge packages by watching as the the packages actually get installed and, and and see what's actually going on okay let's let's uh let's see if the thing's almost done i think it's almost done here done there you go so we see it's 90 i think this is 96 seconds or 100 seconds total although it seemed a little longer than 100 100 seconds um, but maybe that particular part of the problem was only 100, 100 seconds, which is the, um, the dev container configuration. I would say all in, it's probably between 5 to 10 minutes total to get, to get a dev container. That's like a very complex one set up, which again, and I'll, sh I'll show how we can do this, why it's such a good idea to do the pre-built containers. Okay, so now it's configuring the code space. Okay, we, we've got it launched. So now that we've got this code space launched here, notice it, it even sources the virtual environment for me because under setup, one of the things that I do is I say echo and I put this into, I put the path to the virtual environment into a bash RC. So then the first time I open up a shell, it, it's, it's, all, it's all set and it's, and it's ready to go. And if we go here, we say which Python. So what are some of the advantages, again, of, of setting this environment up from scratch here? Well, the, one of the advantages is that I can go to a make file, for example, and I can just say, you know, make install. And what will happen is that it will actually uh, be very, very fast and, and iterative because I've already got all the stuff satisfied on my machine in fact there's a ton and ton of, of libraries here that are that are already set up here and then if i want to test out you know basically my uh, unit test here as well so in this case i've got like a, a test file here just to, like a very basic test as a as a experiment right testing is all set up so this means that if i wanted to then go in and set up continuous integration using GitHub. We can see it's it's very straightforward, right? We can see that in this case, we're building out the GPU branch. We're doing make install, make lint, make test, make format, make deploy. And if we look at the deploy process here, right? This would this is a placeholder where I could put in whatever I needed to do for deploy. So, a few things to point out about this particular make file would be that that I've got a uh, install step I typically put. If there's a custom like post uh, dev container builds that I need to do, I would actually uh, put them as a separate step and then maybe call them later. If I needed to, again, have some kind of basic test set up here, I like to just get one running initially so I could hand it off to someone and say, hey, here's, here's how we do tests. Also, I think it's a good idea to get formatting uh, in, in in here so that you have some formatting tools and then in terms of linting as well I like to have a lint so because I have install test format all set up here uh, I'm, I'm really in a good place to deploy things I also could go here 
and, and look at this. I have a, a little bit of a, a container here. And if I want to if I want to lint even my container, I could do that inside of my make file by doing container lint because there's a tool that allows us to, to do that. So I'm, I'm basically in a, in a really good spot to to basically have full test coverage for my project. So this is the foundation. And look, it even found some warnings like, oh, don't do this, don't do this, right? So depending on what it is I care about, I could either disable those those warnings or act on those those warnings. Uh, and then finally, as I mentioned before, in the make file, you know, this would be whatever it is I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy. If I'm gonna deploy to SageMaker, I'll do some kind of infrastructure as code deploy. Or if I'm gonna deploy to AWS App Runner, uh, I get I could build build all that together. You even could do a, like essentially two commands to do the entire continuous delivery pipeline. If you did make all, you do install, lint, test, format, deploy, and this would go through. And each of those operations would would need to need to occur in order for things to to work properly. And then, as I mentioned before, always a good idea to like kick the tires here and see like you know does does my um, Quick start PyTorch work, right? Make sure that all of my my machine learning code, uh, it, it's actually set up. Look, it says it's using the CUDA device. It's training the model. And I think if we go here, right, if we do dash L1, you can see that it's utilizing the GPU, right? So it's, it's actually doing a, a, a training job right here where it's using the GPU. So th that's what's nice about the NVIDIA monitoring tools that are available here. NVIDIA-SMI is, is allows me to actually check out what's happening you know, as, it's as it's training the model. Now, the, the other one that's a good one to play around with that, I, that I've mentioned earlier is if, if I, have a, I have a really small audio file here, and I could use Whisper to to also exercise the GPU, and I, I just use these initially to just verify that my environment is set up in a way that that works for me. So if we go through here and we say, okay, let's uh, let's run Whisper. What's going to happen is that while it's downloading, I could actually do this. I could I could go and um, check out the GPU, let it let it actually refresh and so as soon as soon as the model is downloaded it's a very large model it's like three three gigabytes of storage it's going to go inside of here and it's going to uh, saturate this gpu temporarily so that it can train uh, the particular model so it's let's go ahead and uh, try this out gpu so it's downloading this large language model and, and we're going we're gonna to use the GPU to do a training job. So one of the nice things about having um, a, a big storage and big RAM is that you can actually do things with these instances. And in particular, you do want a pretty big environment, like lots of RAM and lots of disk storage in order to do uh, things for MLOps. And I, I think this is one of the things that we're seeing for sure in this in this um, code space environment, is that these are actually bigger machines that even uh, a regular laptop user could get access to. Uh, most laptop users don't have 100 gigs of RAM. I don't even know if they make a laptop with 100 gigs of RAM. But here we go. See the the GPU is now getting saturated here, or, or at least it's 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 heavily utilized, and and we can see that it's taking some text that I wrote and it, and it was able to transcribe it and very very quickly because it was able to use the GPU. So we, we know that this environment works. The, these are all the steps that I would recommend to, to make sure that you know your, your environment works. Now the other thing then, now that we know it works, would be to go back to, to this, this new environment that I've set up here, which I can also share with, uh, with people if they wanna play around with it. And, and I would just, check a few little settings here so one of the things that i would set would would be it would be that it is probably a good idea to to set up the pre-build right 
the pre-build configuration. So it says there are no pre-builds configured for the repository because we know it takes a long time. It takes like five, seven minutes or something like that to 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 set up a pre-build. So let's let's read up on it real quick and let's see what it says. So it says pre-building your code spaces to speed up code space creation. You can configure your project to pre-build code spaces for specific branches in specific regions. And so um, configuring them, uh, basically, if your repository is greater than 32 gigabytes, pre-builds won't be available for two core and four core machines. And here we go, we have settings, and, and then you choose what kind of branch you wanna set up for pre-build. Um, and then inside of here, you you actually tell it which dev container. So you could have separate uh, build configurations for each of the the different kinds of branches that you have, and then you choose you know the frequency essentially. Like, do you want it on push, on config change, scheduled? I mean, the scheduled is pretty interesting because let's say you were in charge of building these code spaces for an MLOps team. Maybe maybe you schedule them every night. Right, and they just whatever is nightly, they take the latest version of your nightly build, uh, and they and they take it, and you can also reduce the pre builds to a particular region um, if you wanted to, and then as well, um, there's some advanced options here, and 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 you can you can you can tweak those. The other thing you can do is you you can also have environmental variables that are available inside of it. Uh, but in in general, the the what you're going to be charged for is compute, basically, because you're you are using compute, and so you have to also figure out how much compute you'd want to use, you know, basically d during during your your, your pre-build uh, process. And so let's go back to here we go. Here's our here's our pre-build. So let's go ahead and set up a pre-build here, and we would just select which branch. The default would be every push. Sure, that's fine. And let's go ahead and select this GPU branch, and then it, it's just going to ask me what config file. And then um, we'll go ahead and, and say create. So what, what's nice about it is it's going to queue up and it's going to build out a pre-build config here, which would the next time I launch it should make things uh, a lot uh, a lot faster. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting that I could do uh, is well is that if I wanted to, I could I could also create like a, a bleeding edge version of this because uh, one of the reasons why I set this up was so that I know everything would work, which I just verified like all the really cool stuff worked. But one thing that would be kind of interesting that you could do is if, if we went back here, I could basically um, say view all branches and create a new branch. And we could call this... Um, uh, you know, experimental or something like that. Exper. And what this branch could do is this would be all of the unpinned versions uh, of the code. And so if I select this experimental branch, maybe what, what I could do is I could go to the requirements here and I could just play it fast and loose and just see like what happens if I just take off all of the pinned versions, this would be a good good way to figure out, you know, what 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 are the versions that actually work, and there there would be some skill involved in like potentially not always doing all of them. Maybe you do like a, you know, a um, you know, a bifurcation, and you you have you have some of the libraries that you pin, some of them that you don't, or you have certain kinds of you know, configs. It just depends on how much stuff that you've got inside of here. But, uh, you know, this would be a, an interesting experiment to see, like, w what are the packages that blow up if I just get rid of all... I mean, there's a lot of libraries I've got inside of here, but but this could be one of the jobs for somebody on an MLOps team is they need to constantly be evaluating what are the new versions of the packages that they should be using and just trying them out, right? And so if we go ahead and we commit this change, what I could do is now that I've got this experimental branch is I would go back to the settings 
and I would go back to code spaces and I would say set up pre-build again and this time I would pick a pre-build for an experimental branch and so what's what's cool about this is now I can test out two different flavors right I have the I have the stable flavor and then I have experimental flavor and of course I can always look at the output right which is it's going to save me a ton of time to be able to do this so this will take a while I won't sit here and wait for all this to run but it is nice to know that I've got this thing uh, set up here I would say the other thing that would be that would be fun to play around with is is to to look a little bit more carefully about the github actions workflow so in this case right here let's take a look at this uh, uh, actions workflow and describe what it does so all, all this does is it says that every time I push a change to the GPU branch that it should run each of these steps make install make lint make test make format and and make deploy and so we could always test this locally to make sure that those work and then they should work when I push changes to to the uh, github and then the github actions should should work so if the way I would test it locally is I would say you know make install which I think I already did so I'll do make lint let's make sure make lint works let's do make test make sure make test works and then if I say make deploy it's just going to be empty so it won't do anything but there we go right so this should work and if I say get status do I have any even I don't think I have any changes that I've made yet and so maybe what I'll do is I'll just put a little um, a little comment in here that says you know like TBD or something right just so it'll make a change to the project and then I could do get status and add this and then commit it adding um, a, a trigger for CI CD and then we'll go ahead and push this change now once I push this change if we go back to this project it's gonna it's gonna trigger a build there we go adding a trigger for CI CD right so I could just select this so I could select actions and then we can watch it go through the build process so what, what's really uh oh oh th well this static is I don't know what that one does but there, there's several different build processes um, w one of them is the right because there's there's several different files this is CI CD this is the one I care about which is install the packages lint the packages test the packages format the packages and then deploy the packages so so it's all set up for someone to to customize this uh, and, and I, th I think it's a really good formula right installed in test format deploy uh, and depending on what it is I'm building uh, it should go pretty smoothly and I can see the output here as well so let's let this thing run here and and the great the great thing about this uh, this process is I'm also potentially able to to even test with um, github actions against a pre-built environment I didn't do it in this formula but I could actually even spin even speed this up if I wanted to by telling it to build against a particular environment one of the things you can do is you can tell the github actions file to do that in fact if we look at the github actions here if we look at this the way you would do that is is instead of using ubuntu latest you can tell github actions to use the uh, dev container and in fact we could look at that real quick um, dot dev container actions and let's see if it so here's github actions and there, there's a there's a section here for github actions dot dev container where, where, where you can actually tell it to to run the integration test 
here we go dev container ci a dev container build and run github action so you can you can basically take your pre-built container as well and you can also run that against it so in this case look here we go we would say build and run uh, dev container task uses dev container ci vo2 and then you just change it out so this would be kind of cool let's let's see if i can add this inside of here and uh and 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 so it says with this example each time the actions runs it will rebuild the docker image for the dev container but the other one that is probably more interesting is can you yeah here we go you build pre-building an image using the dev container for ci this is what i wanted run the ci build in the dev container so that so that basically um it would it would it would use it would use actually your dev container uh so, so you it would be a very fast uh process to actually do your test so there's some very interesting kind of emerging workflows that are happening by using these these dev containers for for an mlops uh, workflow so if we go back here though look it all passed and if we look at this we see the status badge it should be working right here and um, there we go it's passing so both the code space pre-build and the ci is is passing now if i go back to the experimental one real quick um one of the things that we can do is we also can look at the actions here and we can look at the code space pre-builds and we can see the experimental that it, it takes you can see it's taking seven minutes look it's taking quite some time to actually build this out which really highlights why it's such a good idea to to use pre-built containers when you're starting to do very complicated uh, workflows and i believe i can set this as a tag let's see here there's there's definitely a way to to change the um to to change this this pre-build uh, process uh, let me look at this here maybe it has to pass once but you can see here i, I believe once it's once it's been able to create the template i think there's a there's a section that appears and it will show me how i could actually change this so that when i'm on the experimental um you know section here i could actually look at this badge and, and verify it so how would we do this so it says oh pre-build I, I guess i could just change this to to experimental right and this should be it, it should be so it would need to be it would, it would it would need to to be this this change here um, yeah so i would i would change this particular part like that yeah so there we go and then i would also change this particular part here yep and then i would change this branch to experimental like that and i believe that that should show me uh, well it didn't i don't think it's i think it has to pass first the 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 pre-build has to pass first and then it'll it'll wake up so it's still it's still um still working here let's double check here Go here, go to experimental, and then if we go to this um, settings, 
and we go to code spaces. Here we go, experimental. And, and we could we could even look at the runs. And we could also edit, let's see, every push. We've got all that. And, and we could we could um, view the runs. So it's still running. So look, you can see how long it takes. It can take up to 10 minutes or beyond, right? Which really highlights why using the pre-built containers are such a cool idea because even if it's your laptop, it's going to take a long time to install all these all these re requirements. And there is it is interesting though. There you go. Create status badge. That's what I was looking for. So if I if I go ahead and say create status badge, we can just grab this. That that's what I needed to do. And now I can copy this. So it, it hasn't built one yet. And we go back to this. We we can double check we're on the experimental branch, which is this one. And then we can we can swap this out. I mean I guess you could you could build you could have both. I mean you could say um, you, you could have one for the GPU and one for the experimental, but and you could even call this a name. So we could say code pre builds we could say experimental branch like that. And then this would be the, the, the cutting edge the cutting edge versions. I don't know if it if it refreshed that. I guess we could we I couldn't put in additional information, but but when this thing is done, it should it should kick back to this this particular uh, location here and and show us the 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 pre builds. And again, this is there's GPU twelve minutes. So this has been twelve minutes. It's got to be close now. What what is nice though is I can I can look at the output right so I can see all the different things that it's doing, which does help me debug things in the future. So instead of me having to wait, you know, and watch something in real time that takes you know 10, 15 minutes, and this is one of the things that takes a long time with you know building things with continuous integration, is I can always run this in the background. Look, it looks like it's done. I can always run this in the background, and then if there is an error. I can look at previous runs of it and then debug it very easily. So this is a huge time saver, even in doing bleeding edge stuff, because it allows me to look at previous runs and configure it. So it, it's, it's looking positive. It's possible that this this actually might work, uh, and and I could then build off of this. So this is a good this is a good um, I think next place to build off of. And what I can do after this is now start building code from scratch, right? Now that I've got the lay of the land done, I've got some different code build things working. I've got experimental branch, code spaces, all this stuff. I think the next step would be then let's let's actually start building some MLOps tooling inside of here and potentially even deploy it to, to production. All right, so... What we can probably finish off the day doing is building actually solutions inside of this repo that I set up here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen and get started here. So uh, really to get started, where I'll, where I'll begin with is to talk really briefly about uh, Hugging Face. And so Hugging Face, I think is is at the center of a lot of what's happening in MLOps, and uh, one of the things that's interesting um, about this is that is that it's a great place to kind of um, you know you know kick the tires essentially on a lot of the the cutting edge machine learning operations. So let's first just take a look real quick at Hugging Face, and, and we see here that you can search models, organizations, users, data sets, spaces solutions etc and if we go through to my profile you can see i can also create these these artifacts right here so just to show you really briefly um, how to do that if i want to create a new model 
I could just go go through here and just say like you know hi and then create a model and I could just literally drop a model you know on top of this and, and that would be one way to do it uh, likewise a new data set I could say hi right and just go through here create a new data set drop a CSV file on top of here and 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 add it in likewise spaces again super simple these are these are basically like uh, places where I could build out some kind of a, a visualization for my application you can see this is like a hello world now th what's cool about this though is not only can I build it here but I can also build it inside of code spaces so I think there's a pretty good story for MLOps around pre-trained models with github code spaces and so what's nice is I've already pre-installed all of this stuff inside of this environment which is again one of the cool things about about um, you know about using code spaces. So if I go back here and I and I go to my environments and I and I want to launch it, I should be able to go right inside of of this particular uh, uh, pre-trained or, or pre-built uh, environment. And Hugging Face is all loaded up. And, and ready to go. And so the, the first thing that I would do if I wanted to start playing around with it is potentially build like a, a little hugging face app here. And so what, what I can do is is I, I can actually either look at an existing one right here and you can see like these are downloading models, fine tuning models here, or loading models. Um, but, but what I can do is actually build out something just locally to, to play around with the, the process of of uh, of using hugging face so I would say the first thing that would be kind of nice is I could I could call this uh, you know basically demo uh, hugging face something like that or actually no I'm just gonna put it into hugging face because I already have my build system is smart enough to know about hugging face here because if I look at the make file I believe it's going to lint my the library. So if I wanted to use the, um, well, I guess I could do this. I could make a demo. I could say make dirt, make demo, and then I would just need to add in a section here. So it would it would look inside of the demo directory for for um, if, let's see dash dash coverage demo. Coverage equals demo. So this would give me code coverage. And then if I wanted to lint my code, I could say demo as well. And then if I wanted to format my code, I could also say demo like that and, and what, library code. So now that I've got that set up, I could go into this directory here. Or actually, I'll just I'll, I'll go stay on the outside and I'll say make format and and it says demo doesn't exist because we're gonna do the hello world from hugging face here. So we're gonna we're gonna build an app.py. So let's go ahead and just build this out real quick. And we'll, we'll call this demo app.py like this. And here we go. Import gradio. And now what's going to happen is I can actually run this application locally and even preview it inside of GitHub code spaces. So check this out. Here we go. And we can see like, hello. So this is a really cool part of code spaces here is that in fact, um, I can actually build machine learning operations applications directly inside of this environment and experiment with them. And if we go here, um, we can see that I've, I've got that thing working. So now that I've got the Gradio working, what else could I play around with? I think probably the funnest thing to play around with would be to to actually um, do some kind of an operation with Hugging Face, like 
summarized text, for example, would be a good one. Now, what we can do is we can actually use our friend here, Copilot, to help us out. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to build out a demo summarize um, uh, script. And if, and if we click on this, Copilot can actually help me out in building a hugging face code. So I'm going to first set the prompts correctly. So we'll go here and we'll say, um, build a hugging face summarize summarize library like that. And, and this is a key part of building things with Copilot is that you have to set the prompts right. And so it's going to first, you know, you know, help me with some stuff. Now, in this case, you also have to be careful about maybe telling certain prompts. I don't want this prompt. Instead, prompting it in your own way. So we can basically say this. We could say def. We could say build a function that summarizes. There we go. It takes in text and returns a summary. And now, look at this. It, it built out this thing for me. Um, and it says summarize summarize text here. So import the summarizer. In this case, it's pipe, pipeline summarization, summarize the text and return back the summary. So that looks pretty good. And create a summarizer. Some of this, the comments I don't think I necessarily want. So let's go ahead and delete these out. And also, it's not a good uh, software engineering best practice to to build this build this out. build a hugging face summarized library and here we go now that I've got that set up um, there's a couple ways to test this out one of the ways I like to test things out is by using IPython and so if we we go through here I can just type in IPython whoops I, I can do this I can say IPython and I can say um, change directory into demo and now I can say from uh, summarize import summarize there we go and now it's gonna pull in this model and I could just do some text and say like I don't know like this is a very long sentence uh, or, or paragraph I hope you can summarize the text to something smaller. All I want to say is good day. Or, you know, so, so, some, something like that. And. There you go. So we got text here. Um, oh, I need to do equals. Text equals. So IPython is pretty good to just play around with this. And now if I say summarize, then I can go through and just run the summarize directly against this. And you can see here it's going to download the model, pull it in, in inside of my ecosystem, and then let, let me play with it right inside of this interactive prompt. Well, so all that is really important is a good day for the country. So what's pretty funny is that it, it used my text and actually it actually expanded it to, to, it, to it didn't summarize, it actually expanded it because depending on, on what it is the pre-trained model does, 
it, it may or may not be useful to 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 summarize that way. So what we could do instead, because it, it is kind of hard to generate enough text, uh, and this is, again, why it's good to play around with things first before you get too, too down the, the weeds, is what if, what if I wanted to um, grab things from Wikipedia? I think that's generally like a, a good place to grab, you know, large, gr you know, groups of text. So if I said, you know, um, build a function here, build a function that grabs a, the, the, the text from a Wikipedia page. Wikipedia page. There we go. And returns the summary. Use the Wikipedia library. <clears throat> so in this case, we could we could see, we could do that we could say build a function and returns a summary now it, it can get a little bit wacky here because it can it can get a, too too much in the weeds so you have to kind of help it there we go and we'll say like wikipedia and we can say url so you have to watch it and, and prompt it and it's okay here we go get the text from the url use the wikipedia library so again I don't think it's a good idea to put the import inside of the function. And then we can actually do that, summarize the text, and return back the summary. Now, um, one of the things that's going to be that's going to be tricky is that we also need to test this out. So again, I would need to to um, to 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 maybe move this around a little bit to make this here. So we have a summarize. We have Wikipedia URL. And so if I go back to to first, let's look at um, let's look at Wikipedia. And let's look at, I don't know, like English, uh, uh, mass transit. There we go, rapid transit. So we'll take that. Now, I don't know if it's going to take the URL uh, or not, or if it's going to be like just the, the name, but pretty easy to fix regardless. We can just CD into this, and we can say from, we can say from summarize, imports Wikipedia like that there we go oh import Wikipedia no module let's don't make sure it's installed maybe I didn't install it Wikipedia oh I don't see it in here so yeah I would need to install this uh, which is fine we, we can just do We'll call this here Wikipedia. So I need I need to actually go back to my prompt here and do a make install, and this should install the Wikipedia library. I think this demonstrates why it's such a good idea to have a really good environment like this set up because it makes um, getting past little issues like this way easier so if we go through here and we say i python there we go and and now if we say from summarize import Wikipedia, there we go. And now if we say URL and we do do that, let's try that. And let's again go back to our code here and say Wikipedia URL. Ah, so it has no object page. So so it didn't. It, so basically, this happens sometimes with with um, GitHub Copilot. Is it is it is it doesn't actually give you all of the right code there we go so it, it, it you have to actually really check it to, to make sure it's doing the right thing so we need to go back again 
and just we can say URL. I need to cd into this directory, grab it, and then let's see if this will work. Wikipedia URL. Function has no attribute page. Um, hmm. So this didn't work. I might even have to look at the documentation here. But basically, let's do this. Let's even change our code. Let's say, um, search Wikipedia pages. There we go. Search term. So let's let's just make it a lot more simple. I think that's that's always a good idea. So and I'm also just going to cd into this demo, so I don't have to keep going in here. We'll say I Python, and we'll say um, from summarize import from summarize import search Wikipedia search Wikipedia search wiki. There we go. And if I say search wiki rapid transit, there we go. So we see there's a rapid transit page, right? So that that's useful. We got some we got something working. And then the next thing would be to um, to grab grab text from a Wikipedia page. So just make it a little bit more simple here. This looks good. Page title, page content. Okay, so now I'm going to exit this, and I'm going to try to try to to use the next section, which is from summarize import git wiki text. There we go. And then we say results get wiki text and then we, we just find this one rapid transit results there you go so we got we got some text now so we have enough that now I should be able to feed this into the summarize in fact I'm already here so I don't need to do anything I can just pass it right into the summarize function and I just say from summarize imports um, summarize and now if I just say result is equal to get wiki text yeah sure that's that should work right that that should work right get wiki text rapid transit and then we would say summarize results results and we can say summary or my summary like that does that work hmm so something something got screwed up here because it looks like the model itself it, it, it may need some like guardrails around it, which, which can happen sometimes. And one of the and I've noticed this with hugging faces that like it, it, it needs it, it needs a little bit of, of work around it. And I think I, I've got one here where I can I can maybe look at it. like so here we go. So loading a model. so, what we probably want to do is we want to load a, a tokenizer. I think we need to look, either look at the documentation or, or tweak this function a little bit because it's it's not working the way I would expect it to work. Now we could we could go to here, and we could go to the um, the model it's using, which is. Let's see, I think it told us. Huh. 
Huh. So so I, I believe it's the 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 one of the models on Hugging Face. So I can I can grab the text that was generated here. This is another way to test it. Just grab all this text, which is a lot. Now, this could be one of the issues as well, is that there's just so much text that it can't accept it. Um, but l let's go back to Hugging Face. Let's go to Summarization. And let's go to, this is the model that, that I probably would want to use. And if I just paste it in here, I think the issue is I need to to be give it some some more parameters so that it doesn't blow up. So it's hugging face is definitely experimental. So so this this in theory should work, but but what we need is is we need to say use in transformers is we we need to copy this here and we need to put this into our code. So so this didn't really work out too well. Like it it was kind of okay but but it needs to be cleaned up a little bit so what we could do instead is we could just swap this out here we could put this in there and then we could just grab this code and see if the um if 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 hugging face will will let us do this. Here we go. So notice how, I'm sorry, the copilot, copilot was smart enough to notice how it's actually giving us some guardrails. So it's saying like, look, here's max length, max min length. And, and, and so this will actually protect us, I believe, from blowing up. And so now, if we go back to this, this, this actually might work. So if I go IPython and I say, from summarize import let's just import everything and then we would just say the the text is going to equal um, search or we'll do result result yeah so let's just get the rapid transit text and we can even see how long it is right so it's got a lot of text in there and then we can say uh, my sum is equal to summarize result like this boom still having some issues with it so yeah you're you can get these little issues when you're when you're trying to work with uh, particular models now fortunately I've already got an answer for this because um, I, I've actually have some other code I can look at. So I'm going to go to GitHub and I already have a model that I know works. And we can go to Hugging Face CLI. Hugging Face. Hugging Face CLI. There we go. So I have I have something that's kind of like this already. And I think it's this one. Yeah, so here we go. We're, we got some code here. And I believe this is the issue. Write a function is that right, is, is we need something more like that instead. Let, let's pick this one. Let's swap that out. So... So we can we can just get rid of this. We can do summarizer like that. Let's try that. So this is going to use a small model, and I believe it's going to um, it's going to say max length is 180. And let's go ahead and try this one. Try one more time. IPython. Import everything. Results. And then we'll say summarize. Oh, 
well, it's taken a while, so it seems like a long time to to do a a summarization. But unless it's unless it's hanging here, there we go. Oh, click because um, prints. I need to print this prints, and then I need to print this. There we go. Let's do it. Again. Let's do it again. So it can take a while to to build out things with experimental libraries like Hugging Face, but the better tooling you have, the easier it is. Here we go. My sum. Does this work? There we go. So, so we we it was able to get this summary, and uh, there we go. Rapid transit. Yeah, pretty cool. So we, we were able to get this thing, get this thing cooking. So we have some victory here. Now, what I would do is now start to clean it up, right? Start start playing around with with all this stuff, um, and we say we say make uh, format. So let's format our code. L let's go up a directory. So we'll say make format format our code right so it's going to clean it up a little bit let's lint it i probably have some kind of linting problem in in my code yep of course i do unused imports we don't need that we can get rid of it because i ultimately didn't use it and then if i lint it again now it works and now if i say make test as well we we, we can see everything's working so really the the next thing that would be kind of cool to do would be can i take this thing and can i convert it into both a command line tool and can i convert it into a gradio app and potentially even push this into into hugging face so i think we can so so what i would do first is build the command line tool so i i'm going to um uh basically convert this code into a command line uh, tool library. So we'll, we'll call this, um, we'll go back into the demo here. We'll say touch CLI like that. And then uh, I can use again Copilot to help me out. I can say, you know, basically build a CLI. There you go. Import click from, there you go. Look, it's importing all the stuff I care about. And then we would just say, you know, click group, which is, uh, w which will will allow me to build like a, a shell for this. And then there we can just say command, and we'll call this um, summarize. So this will be a, a, a summarization command, and then it will say the search term. And it would just take a search term and it would just automatically try to summarize it, which is pretty cool. So look at this. It, it built out something that looks not bad. And then we can just uh, try it out. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Chmod, um, we, we can add a, a, a shebang line up here. User bin env python. So if we say summarize the search term, again, we would want to figure out, um, I don't know, like Barack, no, no, what was it? Rapid transit, does that work? Enter the, enter the page title to summarize. 
Um, wow, pretty cool. So it's actually prompting me. I didn't even notice it was doing that. It's not even prompting me which pages to summarize. So pretty neat little tool here. And does it work? There we go. Not bad. P pretty, pretty neat. So if I say get status, we can check this in. So I'll say get add star, get status, no, get add. Well, let's just go up a directory. That'll make it easier. Get add star, get commit, adding working uh, prediction. And now to, to kind of make it more of like a, a production kind of deploy here, we could also build this into a web app and then push that web app into Hugging Face. So in order to do that, what we could do is I could just tweak this, right? Like, let's just tweak this thing. And let's just say like, um, uh, build, build a Gradio app that summarizes text from Wikipedia articles. There we go. And let's just see if, if Copilot will help us out here. It looks like it's pretty smart. There we go. There's a search term. And um, there's the summary. And now it's going to build the interface here, which looks pretty good. Inputs, text, hugging face summarizer, allow flagging. And there we go. So let, let's try it out. So now I can just say um, go into Python demo app. And let's run this thing and see if it will, will do a summarization. All right, we got a demo working. If we open up the browser, summarize the text from Wikipedia article. Uh, I think it would be rapid transit. Let's go ahead and submit it. And now while it's churning, we can even look at the output here, right? So we can see, okay, it looks like it's not blown up so far. Maybe we'll get lucky, it'll just work. And it's gonna, it's going to, it looks like it's gonna work. It look, looks like it's gonna be able to serve out this particular uh, prediction. There we go. Wow, not bad. That was surprisingly smooth here. So now that we got that working, I would say the the next thing to do would be again to go through my, you know, um, cleanup process. So we'd just say make lint, make sure that works. Linting's good. Format. I'm sure it needs a format. There you go. It formatted some code. Um, also, I can say get status. Check all this in. You know, adding working radio app used with copilot to build perfect there we go so we got all that stuff cooking and really the final the final step would be let's see if we can play around with this and push it into hugging face now so so it, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways we could do this including using github actions and pushing them but i think it's probably cleaner to to just be lazy to prototype it this way which is that what i would do is i would go to spaces here right i would i would go to my profile and see this is the one i just had recently is i could just go here and just start adding the file so i could say create a new file called um, app.py and then I could just literally throw the code inside of here, which is which is kind of a, a cool way to build it. So let's just grab that. And then we'll throw it in there. Looks good. Okay. Now I'm also going to need to install some libraries or else it won't work. So I'm going to need to go here and say requirements.txt. Requirements. 
Um, now, uh, a couple things to be aware of here is that we, we probably want to pin it as well. So I probably want to say pip freeze grep uh, gradio. So we can grab the version I've got on here, right? So we can say gradio. And then we also have Wikipedia. So we would say grep Wikipedia. There we go. And I think that's all I'm going to need. Maybe transformers. You know, we could say pip freeze transformers because uh, let's look. What do I get? Yeah, tr transformers. Let's just put that in there as well. There we go. Transformers 422.2. So, so once I've got that here, I mean, just for like doing a demo, I think this is not bad. And then what will happen is behind this, uh oh, well, I think it had a runtime error because there was no library. Now it's building again and we can even watch it. So now it's going to install those libraries. So it's got uh, kind of a similar vibe to maybe the uh, code spaces and who knows what uh, what Hugging Face will do in the future. But we've got this thing cooking here and um, No module named summarize. Oh, well, I need to put the summarize module <laughs> in there. So, so we're missing another piece here. So I also need to do that, which is fine. We'll go here, create a new file called summarize. And let's go back to this. Here we go. Yep, this is it. And there we go. And then we can again, can just watch it build which is kind of neat to see this build process. I'm assuming. From summarize. Ho hopefully this. Summarize. Huh? I wonder why that's why that's not um, well, that's not working. It should it should rebuild this. Oh, there we go. Running. Okay, so it worked. So now we can do the same thing. Rapid transit. Well, <laughs> that's funny. It didn't. It, it, let's look at the logs here. What's it doing here? Oh, so it needs. I guess it needs PyTorch installed. At least one of the TensorFlow or, hmm. Run, let, let's Google this. So this, now we're getting another error. Uh, hugging face. So maybe we need this. Let's try that. Let's see if we it, it might need maybe because I maybe it was not a good idea for me to do this. I, I don't I don't know if it's already pre-built in there. I mean, I guess I could first try this, just get rid of it and see if that fixes it. Um and then let's look at the logs. So it's building it again. Let's see if this will just fix it. Because I'm not sure if it if Hugging Face is smart enough to know about uh, loading its own libraries. I would think it would, but but I don't know. Okay, here we go. Oh, is this gonna work? 
Oh no! See, yeah, it it, it it does need the transformers. So so would have to go back to this, go to requirements, edit, and probably put in this transformers torch. And let's see if that works. Transformers torch. So again, this is where a um, build system that could automatically push this, like which GitHub Actions can do this. You can push directly to spaces. Could also be a pretty good feedback loop because you could verify that you've got all the libraries. I have a lot of stuff in this repo, uh, so it's maybe not a perfect match, but if I was going to build a one-to-one, -one, I would rip out some of the stuff I have. Okay. And uh oh, runtime error. View view logs. Space not ready. Hmm. Okay. So we got got to let this thing wake up or something. Not not sure if it's been built too many times or or what's happening. But let's let's come back to this. Huh. Maybe all of Hugging Face has a problem. <laughs> no, there we go. View logs. Weird. Weird it's... It's... Um, space not ready. Huh. Don't, not sure why this is having issues. I guess I could look one more time in the requirements. Transformers Torch. Looks good. <clears throat> But anyway, it's it's similar. It's similar. It's similar to this process. There, there's some debugging potentially I would have to do, um, and I guess I could swap even to the the AI accelerators. Like the 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 uh, the AI chips could potentially make things go a lot quicker as well. But uh, yeah, not sure why this thing is is acting wacky. I don't know what that even means, um, but. The process generally should should look like this. I guess if, if I look at another one I have that here's a summarized test that I had done previously. Oh, well, at least this is just kind of a hello world application. You you can you can see that in theory in theory it should work. But but the the main the main takeaway is that I was able to get it all prototyped out inside of here. And then in the future, in fact, I can even show that. What I would do is is if we go to um, Hugging Face here. This tutorial. Is it this one? Yeah. If you, if you take a look at this, if I was going to do a, a continuous delivery type process, what I would do is I would go to Hugging Face and I would create a token inside of Hugging Face. And let's even take a look at that. So if I go to here and I go to settings and I go to access tokens, you can actually create a new token. And, and this would need to be a write-based token because uh, I would want to actually uh, push the changes into the Hugging Face Spaces app, which would then load a Gradio app. And then I could actually do... Uh, text summarization and if we look at this you can see what that workflow would look like and that workflow would look like as follows sync to hugging face hub there we go add remotes push to hub so github remote add this space and then push uh, basically the hugging face space directly to whatever it is that I was going to uh, demo. Uh, and in this case, this was just kind of a hello world application, but it, it did like a summarization uh, application. So you can you can also set up continuous delivery um, and, and, and get that hooked up as well. So really combining all of these things together, maybe the last thing I'll, I'll show is that in this particular repo, I do have a fine tuning example here, and let's maybe just take a look at this real quick. If I wanted to modify an existing model, 
one of the ways you could do it is is look at this hugging face fine tune example. I load a data set. I take the tokenizer from a pre-trained model. I build a tokenized function. I then load the model right here. I then create my own accuracy metric. I then take a smaller data set and then I go through and I build out a training system and then I train the model. So let's actually run that real quick. So if I go into uh, into Hugging Face here and I say Hugging Face Python, Hugging Face Fine Tune Hello World, take a look at this. What's going to happen is it's going to download all this stuff. And in fact, we can just throw this up here is that it's going to actually fine tune this model locally and we we should be able to even see it um, saturating this the, the GPU so let's go ahead and take a look at this real quick here we go so it's downloading the uh, pre-trained models um, and the data set and then once this is done then it'll start the, the fine tuning process process which will will saturate our GPU. And, and you can actually push it back to Hugging Face if you want. So this will take just a second. I guess while this one's downloading, let's go back to look at uh, my Spaces app and see if it's woken up. I don't know if that was me or if it was something else. Oh, there you go. So look, this one's running. We can say, I don't know what happened. Maybe it just, maybe Hugging Face had a problem. Rapid Transit, this is a good sign. This looks more promising. So because this is CPU based summarization, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Okay, it's running, it's running, it's running. Definitely taking a while to, to summarize. I guess it really depends on the kind of CPU that they're giving you access to here. I don't know if it's a super slow one, but at least it looks like it's running. That's a, that's a good sign. We can come back to this one. And if we go back to this, once this thing's done, we, we, again, we should see the, the, the GPU hit here. All right, looks like it's finishing up here. So this is again why you need a big disk to do cutting edge pre-trained model work is that you have to download a lot of data locally, big files locally, big models locally I mean all kinds of all kinds of stuff to to get this thing working and uh, let's see here And now it's it's doing our our, our um, training. There we go. Look and look. Here's the GPU getting fully saturated here uh, while while the training is occurring. So we've got really been able to get majority of things that are useful with Hugging Face demoed. And if I go back to this, look, even that worked. So so we've been able to have some some pretty good success here. Now if you want to get access to this thing. You, you can just go to GitHub, and I think I mentioned this, that um, it's in this repo, 
Nogi BJJ MLOps presentation based on the MLOps template. 